Good evening. Tonight, Good Friday, the second part of the three-part tritium. Last night we gathered for Monday Thursday. We remembered Jesus' new covenant to love one another. We celebrated the Lord's Supper. Tonight we recognize the depth of God's love as on this Good Friday we recognize that the Son of God died for my sins, for your sins. As we leave tonight, it'll be the Easter Vigil as we anticipate the resurrection, but we're not going to get ahead of ourselves. Tonight, we recognize that not only was Jesus punished physically, scourged, beaten, whipped, unrecognizable on the cross, naked, hanging on the cross. The most severe punishment was that the father turned his back on his son because of your sin and mine. He became sin personified. That was the severe punishment. For many of us, this is one of the most uh, memorable worships in the year, along with Christmas and Easter, and rightfully so, because tonight is the night when we recognize the cost of our sin and the payment to give us life. May the Holy Spirit be with you in your worship this evening. Please stand as we come to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his stripes we are healed. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger. Nor discipline me in your wrath. There is no soundness in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no health in my bones because of my sins. For my iniquities have gone over my head. Like, like a heavy burden, burden they, are they are too heavy for me. I confess my iniquity. I am, I am sorry, sorry for my, my sin. sin. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord, Lord, my salvation. salvation. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon, Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and, and with his stripes we are healed.
pray. God of mercy, your love for us is so deep that your son gave his life in our place on the cross. We are forgiven through the blood of Jesus. Lead us to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. may be seated.
Passion Narrative According to the Gospel of John. Then there led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to the governor's headquarters. It was early morning. They themselves did not enter the governor's headquarters so that they would not be defiled but could eat the Passover. So Pilate went outside to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him and said, This man... If this man were not doing evil, we would not have delivered him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews said to him, It is not lawful for us to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill the word that Jesus had spoken to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation, the chief priests, have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I might not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. Then Pilate said to him, So you are a king. Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I should release one man for you at the Passover. So do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Then Pilate took Jesus and flogged him, and the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and arrayed him in a purple robe. They came up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and struck him with their hands. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I am bringing him out to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he has made himself the Son of God. When Pilate heard this statement, he was even more afraid. He entered his headquarters again and said to Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. So Pilate said to him, You will not speak to me? Do you not know that I have authority to release you and authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no authority over me at all unless it had been given you from above. Therefore, he who delivered me over to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat of a place called the Stone Pavement, and in Aramaic, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Throughout these days of Lent, we have solemnly and reflectively followed Jesus' mission for the salvation of the world. Tonight, as we confront the culmination of Jesus' passion, we are compelled to face the harsh reality of our sin and the brokenness that it brings. Together, Lord God, we need your grace. We need your forgiveness. We have failed to follow your will. We have refused to obey your law. We are unable to fulfill your plan. We are crushed under the weight of our sin. 
and tonight the harsh reality of sin's horror hangs heavy around us. It is sin that made the cross necessary. It is our sin that required the Savior's death. Lord, we need your grace. We need your forgiveness. At this time, representatives of the congregation will come forward as we symbolically nail our sins to the cross. Last night as we gathered for Monday Thursday, we placed red ribbons on the cross to indicate our individual sins that caused the death of Jesus Christ. And tonight as an act of uh, recognition of our sins that put Jesus on the cross, we will place nails on the cross. We need a savior. It was sin that made the cross necessary, but it was love that drove Jesus to the cross and held him there. It was love for you. Because of his love and his perfect sacrifice, your sins have been covered. The debt has been paid. The burden has been removed. As you hear and experience that reality tonight, you know throughout that you have God's grace. You have God's forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, Heavenly Father, in this day 
this Friday that we call good, we recognize that our sins put to death the Son of God, your Son, our Savior, Jesus. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can begin to appreciate the depth of your love and the cost of our sin. But Lord, send us your Holy Spirit on this Good Friday so that we would grow to experience the cost in a deeper way so that we would live lives redeemed by the blood of Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Last night on Monday, Thursday, we celebrated the Lord's Supper as we remembered the Last Supper of Jesus as he went to the upper room with his 12 apostles. We recall that the term Monday comes from the term, the Latin word mandatum, which means command. When Jesus said, a new command, I give you love one another. We struggled with the thought that even Jesus, as he knew that he was going to the cross, washed his disciples' feet. He served them. He even washed Judas' feet, who would betray him that night. We recalled and remembered the Passover feast when that Passover lamb was sacrificed and the blood was placed on the doorpost, the angel of death would pass over. And yet when the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world showed up, he said, take and eat, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. In a fallen world, I think we have trouble with memory. I certainly do. The older I get, the less I remember. If you don't believe me, think about this. What did you have for lunch yesterday? I had leftovers. What did you have a week ago on Thursday? I don't have a clue. The good news is, though, that God remembers everything about us. The bad news? God remembers everything about us. What we've said, thought, done. What have been your last thoughts and words before you came into church here? Were they kind and gentle words? Encouraging words? Were they hurtful? Painful? Were they just mundane words we can't even remember? When I think about a lot of the words I've used, I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed. I think about words that I use that haven't brought honor to myself or my family or my Good Shepherd family or my God. Oftentimes my words, my actions bring regret. They're not inspiring at all. When you die, what will be the legacy of your words? What will be the legacy of your life? What will your children and grandchildren, your progeny, your Generations yet to come, what will they remember about the words that you shared? Would they be positive reflections? Encouraging? The good news is God remembered the first words of his promise that he shared in the book of Genesis when he said that he would send a descendant of Adam and Eve who would crush the head of Satan, a Messiah who would save his children that's what we celebrated last night, a Maundy Thursday. This new covenant, this new promise of God's legacy. Again, even Jesus, who knew he was going to his death, shared this meal with his disciples. And we shared it last night when he says, take and eat, this is my body, this is take and drink, this is my blood of the new covenant, the new promise. Drink of it, all of you for the forgiveness of your sins. That's the legacy of Jesus' words, a legacy of mercy, forgiveness, a legacy of serving. Jesus said the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. That's what we celebrate tonight, the death of Jesus, the death of our Savior, Again, even when we recall the actions of the soldiers, they crushed a a thorny crown, they scourged him and whipped him, they beat him. He would have been physically nearly unrecognizable. That was suffering. That was pain. 
As the witnesses looked at him and shook their heads and said, look, he's the son of God. If you're the son of God, come down and save yourself. As he expired and took his last breath, as they saw him bleed, that physical punishment was just a mere reflection of the true punishment for your sins and mine. When God turned his back on his son, the son whom he loved, his only son, God turned his back on the one he loved because that son became sin for us. He became sin personified. And when we, even today, continue in our sins, the death that that even brings us today, Jesus took that on himself. That pain and anguish that the conflicts of our sin bring even today, Jesus brought that on himself as he died. And so now we focus in this worship of darkness, this service of darkness. We focus on these seven last words. As Jesus spoke to the people 2,000 years ago, he spoke, speaks to you and me when he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. I wish that was fully true for me. There are sins that I do out of ignorance, certainly. Out of omission, I forget to do things. But unfortunately, there are sins I do intentionally. I know exactly what I'm doing, and I do it anyway. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That mission of mercy and forgiveness, that's why Jesus came, to forgive. Jesus speaks to the thief on the cross, someone who we wouldn't have even hung around with. Jesus died with the two thieves who'd been deriding him, and then one who came to know that he was in the wrong. He said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom as they're hanging together dying. Jesus, remember me. Jesus said to this man who no one cared for at all, said, truly, Jesus said, truly, I say to you, you will be with me in paradise, in heaven. Words of hope, words of promise, words of life. May we hear those words of hope and life, even as we struggle in our lives today, to trust in the promise of Jesus. Jesus, who was a son, who was a dear friend of John, as he speaks to his mother, who his mother looks in anguish and sees her son dying on the cross. He says, woman, behold your son. Son, John, behold your mother. He's providing, he's thinking of other people, even in his death, filled with care and concern, not thinking of his own self, but thinking of someone else. What kind of person would do that? other than the perfect Son of God. But then the Son of God looks to his Father in anguish as the sin of all the world comes on him. In one moment, he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you turned your back on me? We know the reason, because of our sin. But even in these words, he's fulfilling Scripture. As we heard last night, Psalm 22 Jesus is fulfilling that promise that the Messiah would be forsaken. That's the agony. That's the separation from his Father God. That's the punishment for our sin. And yet he was just like you and I. When he said, I thirst, he was thirsty. He was gasping for breath. He would suffocate, but... You know, even in that excruciating crucifixion, he was thirsty. And even that fulfilled scripture from Psalm 69. Even in his death, Jesus was continually fulfilling the prophecies before, or even as he was a human, he was identifying with you and I. Then it was near the end. He says, It's finished, it's fulfilled. It's completed. Everything that needed to be done for all the sins, for all the people, for all times was completed in that moment on the cross. It is finished. 
And then when the task was done, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And breathed his last. He placed all his trust in his father. Even the father that had turned his back on him because of you and me. These were the last words of Jesus before he died. They reveal the depth of God's love for you and the depth of Jesus' love for you. But there's more good news because we know again where the story proceeds in the resurrection. Even in the words of the promise of Jesus who promises to be with us always and promises to come back. I do not know what my last words will be. I do not know what my legacy may be. I pray it's a legacy of faith that this man, husband, father, grandpa, great-grandpa one day, was a man of faith, a sinner who trusted in the love of Jesus. I pray I hear these words from our Savior, and I pray that you hear these words too when Jesus says, well done, good and faithful servant. I pray we hear those words today and live faithful lives today. In Jesus' death, we see the depth of God's love for us. There was one word that Jesus didn't say on the cross. He did not say no. He did not back away from the torture and his death and the punishment that you and I deserve. He didn't say no. He accepted that punishment from God fully and completely. He didn't say no to that mission to save you, to give you life and salvation. And may that gift of his love and mercy bring you his peace. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue now as we say thank you to God for the depth of his love as we receive an offering.
passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, the words of Jesus from the cross, the first word from the Gospel of Luke. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with Jesus. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him. And the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. second word and the people stood by watching but the rulers scoffed at him saying he saved others let him save himself if he is the Christ of God his chosen one the soldiers also mocked him coming up and offering him sour wine and saying if you are the king of the Jews save yourself there was also an inscription over him this is the king of the Jews one of the criminals who were hanged, railed against him, at him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? Do not fear the God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed are justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, Jesus Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. third word. Pilate also wrote an inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Aramaic and Latin and in Greek. 
So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts, one part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. fourth word. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, this man is calling Elijah. Oh, 
the fifth word. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. The sixth word. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The seventh word. It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. 
Now when the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God saying, certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things.
Taught by our Savior, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people, and wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I have raised you up out of the prison house of sin and death, and you have delivered up your Redeemer to be scourged. For I have redeemed you from the house of bondage, and you have nailed your Savior to the cross, O my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God, eternal, leave us not to bitter death. O oh Lord, have mercy.
Thus says the Lord, what have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me, for I've conquered all your foes, and you have given me over and delivered me to those who persecute me. For I have fed you with my word and refreshed you with living water, and you have given me gall and vinegar to drink, O my people. Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, allow us not to lose hope in the face of death and hell. O Lord, have mercy. Thus says the Lord, What have I done to you, O my people? And wherein have I offended you? Answer me. What more could have been done for my vineyard than I have done for it? When I looked for good grapes, why did it yield only bad? My people, is this how you thank your God, O my people? Holy Lord God, holy and mighty God, holy and most merciful Redeemer, God eternal, keep us steadfast in the true faith. O oh Lord, have mercy. I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and the mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality then shall come to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is your victory O death where is your sting the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly, for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. 
And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who had earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation, since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead and the last frog will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting its guard.
Good Friday worship is complete. Our Easter vigil is just beginning. May the Holy Spirit give you grace to grow to trust in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you always. Amen.